everybody, welcome to this week's kids lesson. Hey, I really miss you guys. I wish you were here in person, but you know what? I'm really glad that I get to see you every week through the screen. Know that we love you, we miss you, we're praying for you, and we just can't wait until we can get back all together again. For now though, we're gonna dive into our Bible verse. So if you don't have your Bible sitting next to you there at home, go ahead, pause the video and go grab it. Maybe it looks like this, but go ahead, grab it, because we are going to be in the book of John. John is- I know him, John! <gasps> it's me, hey. Toby Mae Key! Hi. <laughs> Wait, you know John? I know John. Like the John from the Bible? No, Jimmy John. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Great job. Thanks, Pastor Lucy. Okay, so we're talking about John from the Bible. He was one of Jesus' disciples. Whoa. And so he wrote down the things that he saw and experienced so that we can know about Jesus here and now, many, many years later. Wow, thanks, John. Yeah, it was great. So we're going to open up the New Testament, go to the book of John, right at the beginning in chapter number one, and go down to verse number 12. We're going to throw it up on the screen so that we can all be reading the same thing. So go ahead and repeat after me on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Some people. Some people. Did accept him. Did accept him. And did believe. And did believe. In his name. In his name. He gave them. He gave them. The right. The right. To become. To become. Children of God. Children of God. John 1, 12. John 1, 12. That's right. So this verse is talking about Jesus. Oh. Some people accepted him and they nice. chose to believe him. And so for those people, he gave the right to become children of God. I think that's pretty that's cool. That's pretty cool. Now, um, this is pretty cool news. And yeah. so I'm thinking of a way that we can make it even cooler. Um, do you happen to speak whale? Do I speak whale? Yeah, do you speak whale? Uh, I don't know, Pastor Lizzie. I what is whale? I feel like this is something you might be really good at. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take our voices. If right. you've ever seen um, Finding Nemo or you know of our friend Dory. Oh, Dory. So, yes, we're going to talk just like her, like she's talking to whale. So just Whoa. draw out your, your vowel. Okay. Okay? okay. okay, so here we go on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Some people... <laughs> did accept him. Did accept him. <laughs> and did believe. And <laughs> did believe. <laughs> following at home because this is really fun. Okay, here we go. He gave them He <laughs> gave them the right to become the right to become <laughs> children of God. Children of God. John 1, 12. John 1, 12. Awesome. Wow, that was awesome, Pastor Lizzie. Go. You can sing like, opera. I feel like we might need to take you to visit the ocean because you might be able to call some whales for oh, whales. They would be my new us. best friends. That, wait, what? I mean, added best friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right, because we're going to go together. Okay, right. great. Awesome. Well, we're talking about becoming children of God, and that is what this week's video is all about. So go ahead and enjoy, and we'll see you back in just a all minute. All right. Bye. God's story, the good news. So part of God's story is about the gospel or the good news, and it goes like this. In the beginning, God made everything. The sun, the moon, stars, planets, the entire galaxy, and Earth was part of that creation. God made mountains and oceans and forests and deserts and animals that crawled on the ground and flew in the air and swam in the water. Then he made people, Adam and Eve, to live in a garden called Eden. And God called everything he had made good. There was just one rule. Adam and Eve could eat anything they wanted except for the fruit from this one tree. But a snake tricked Adam and Eve into disobeying that one rule. 
Because of that, sickness, sadness, and all kinds of bad things came into God's perfect creation, all because people made wrong choices. Part of how God punished Adam and Eve was by not allowing them in the perfect garden anymore. And if that were the end of the story, that would be bad news for us. That would mean all the wrong stuff in the world would never be made right. But God still loved people, and he had good news for them. He was going to send a rescuer. So they waited, and waited, and waited. Then one day, the rescuer was born as a baby named Jesus. Christmas is when we celebrate the good news of Jesus being born. But it's not just that he was born, it's what he did later that was the best news of all. He took the punishment for all the wrong choices that anyone has ever made anywhere. See, all of us have continued to make wrong choices, just like Adam and Eve did. And just like Adam and Eve, we deserve to be punished for our wrong choices. But here's the thing, Jesus the rescuer never made a single bad choice. Kids, think about a time you made a bad choice. Maybe telling a lie, or taking something that wasn't yours, or hurting another person with something you did or said. Can you believe that whatever that was, Jesus never made a choice like that? And even though he never made a bad choice, he still took the punishment for our wrong choices? And then Jesus did something even more completely unexpected. He came back to life. Really, you can read about it in the Bible, in the stories written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call those books Gospels, which is just an old fancy word for, you guessed it, the good news of Jesus coming to earth, dying for our wrong choices, and coming back to life. That's what we celebrate on Easter. But not just because coming back to life is totally amazing. By coming back to life, Jesus was showing that God can make anything new. There's nothing God can't do. He's more powerful than any sadness, shame, wrong choice, disease, disaster, and even death. And that's the best most amazing good news of all. It's so amazing, Jesus' friends told everyone they could find about the good news. And those people told other people. And those people told other people. And on and on. And that's still happening today. In fact, you just heard the good news. And the Bible says, <clears throat> If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's another way to say God rescues us. And that rescue includes you, your friends, your family, and anyone else in the whole world. And that's the story of the good news. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect world. People made mistakes and the world isn't perfect anymore. God promised his family a rescuer. The rescuer's name is Jesus. Jesus died to take a punishment we deserve, but he didn't stay dead. Jesus came back to life because Jesus can make anything new. And that's a part of God's story. Hey everybody, welcome back. You know, today's big idea makes me think back to the very beginning of where we read off our Bible verse, where it talks about that some people, they did choose to accept him and they chose to believe that Jesus was the son of God. And those people, he gave the right to become his children. So if you have decided to follow Jesus, to believe in him, to accept that he is God, then you have also become a child of God. Whoa. So let's throw up the big idea on the screen because I think this is really important for us. Let's read that together. God's story of love and redemption continues today in the lives of his children. It continues today in the lives of his children. So think about that. If you've decided to follow him, you are his child. That means that this is talking about you. God's story of love and redemption. It's not just a story from the past in the Bible. That's continuing inside of you through your life today. And you know, 
This is a big deal because, okay, shh, don't tell him. I've been looking for new books to read, so I had to sneak into Pastor Stephen's office and grab a book from his. But when you read a book, it has a start and it has an end. Maybe if you picked a book that has a series, you've got a couple books, but eventually the story always comes to an end because that's what stories do. There's a start and there's a finish. Well, the Bible is different because even though it talks about the beginning of the world, the end of the Bible is not actually the end of the story. What our bottom line is telling us today is that this story is still continuing on today because it's continuing through you. God has so much more that he wants to do in you and through you. And just like the people in the Bible, we have to choose to serve him, to follow him. We are going to make mistakes. And so we need to ask for his forgiveness. But how cool is that, that we get to be a part of the one big God story? It's not just something that happened a long time ago, but it's something that's happening in us and through us today. Wow. I don't know about you, but I think we need to say thank you. Would you pray with me today? Jesus, we love you. And I just want to say thank you for giving us the stories that we have in the Bible, the true stories, to show us who you are, to show us how to get close to you. But God, I thank you that your story is not over yet, that it's continuing through each and every one of us. I pray for these boys and girls who are sitting at home or wherever they're listening to this, God, that you would get them excited, that you would begin to give them dreams and just come alive inside of them that they would be so excited about the story that they have to share with others, that there is a story that's still being written. It's not finished yet, and it's going to be lived out through them. We thank you and we praise you, and we're just so excited to see what you're going to do in us and through us this week. And in Jesus' name, we all pray together. Amen. Amen. You guys, I love you and I miss you so much. I can't wait to be together again. Hey, have an awesome rest of your week.